morning. So we're taking the um, three heifers that I was showing you yesterday to, where's the, where's the best place where I don't have eye bags? To Carlisle Auction. Um, I'm just shutting the gate. Always, always, always shut the gate. It's not worth it. I think bulk heads are definitely reserved for like under 50 year olds, maybe. <laughs> I knew it would, I knew it would. Are you had clue? Look at that inch precision. Yeah. Repping Tom Pember the auction. who comes for him. So the girls have gone to the auction which freed up the building like I was talking about yesterday. So what we're going to do is we're just blocking the yard off. That'll do. Um, like so. And we're going to run the bullocks up uh, from this bottom shed to make more room down there. Just sort it out. Slightly lesser ones over there and slightly bigger ones in here. And then we're going to run them down the yard. Less competition for food, less bullying. Uh, I'll stand here. So we've just decided in the last 10 seconds that we're going to doze them. That was short notice, wasn't it? So we're just all standing down there. I want them in here. Get out! Get out! Get out! You're not even funny. Move it! I knew this was going to happen, and I, on purpose, very planned, left the dozing stuff in the tractor. I just knew. I knew. Not quite the same as our house. I think we're very spoiled. The boys are now in a line up the race. Don't know why they call it a race because we're not going anywhere fast. Or a shoot if you're American. time in my life being untidy and leaving things in vehicles has worked well oh what's gonna happen is I know it's dark I'm sorry we're gonna straw this building again and these guys here are living this side As you can see it's in two halves split up by the feed passage and then we'll bring from home all of the calves out of the handling system that are very very much in the way now they can live in that side over there. So then we can get on uh, with routine immunizations, bolusing. We have just given 
just so you know this upside down bottle here is called Trojax or Trodax you can't get it anymore but Roy made a massive mistake last year and he forgot that we'd ordered a load and he ordered a load more so we've got two years supply absolute bonus because if I was to go to the shops now I'd find that um, I, I couldn't buy it and it's a shame really because the license was I think from what I can gather the license was only taken off them because of um, like technicalities about the location of their offices and registered addresses and things I don't think there's anything seriously wrong with the actual product um, and also we gave them Animec which is ivermectin like a pore on ivermectin it's a, a wormer things like lung worms um, yeah so lung worms uh, you can get like these things called eye worms really gross I know um, and biting mice and lice and stuff so if you see your cattle start to itch and stuff yeah that's what that's for which is great so now they're done they can start to hopefully um, be on their own in their own environment um, and stop being pushed around so much by the bigger ones so they'll start to thrive a little bit very very much routine cow jobs today nothing too exciting guys I'm sorry I know um, I've been doing some pretty odd stuff recently but yeah nothing too exciting so yeah doing a time lapse but the cows ruined it they won't leave my phone alone it's not like exciting when it's not sped up is it can I just say as well quickly um, thank you to Farmer P um, he shouted me out on his Facebook page and loads of people came across and said Farmer P sent me that was quite exciting because I'm a Farmer P fan I always have been um, just because he sits a dog on his shoulder I think it's cool <laughs> anyone who drives a skid steer is good with me what a YouTube skid steer club of weirdos that like to drive skid steers they're free to join Gary Glitter won't it won't it be him oh no wait you can't say that anymore <laughs> Wasn't he one of those perverts? I think maybe he was, wasn't he? His mum met Gary Glitter once on a holiday. Ah, ah, ah. He said he was lovely. <laughs> I'm going to go and ask her. Okay, so earlier um, I told you, this is just following on, from when I told you we were going to clear the handling system out so that we could bring the cows in for some um, like routine immunisations and stuff like that. And I just thought I'd show you what it is we're giving them. So I'm doing this because we have struggled for so many years with these problems and I just think if this helps somebody else and stops them going through what we went through then I'm I'm happy with that. That is a job well done. So we are giving these are the boluses. You might have to turn that round somehow. These are Agramin high iodine boluses now we have struggled for years and years with iodine deficiency without knowing and all of these problems that we've attributed to other stuff we've changed bowls we've blamed the silage we've blamed taking cows out of the river so they're not getting minerals from the water like we have literally blamed everything apart from the one thing that it was we should have known maybe should have picked up on it sooner and it was a chance I talk with um, Chaz, who we buy calves off of all things, and he'll remember it if he's watching this. Um, and he said he kept some calves, across, some cows even, across the road from us. And he said when he'd had cows here, um, he really struggled with iodine deficiency. And he said that they just um, throw iodine on the backs and it kind of righted the problem. If we would have been non-farmerish and actually spoke about what the issue was, um, we might have learned that a lot sooner. But as a farmer, obviously, when somebody used to come up to us and say, oh, how's calving going? We'd go, yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 110%. Oh, everything's wonderful. It wasn't. It was not fine. It was not wonderful. It was anything but fine. It was absolutely horrendous. And it was driving me and my mad. And no one spoke about it. And it was one of those done things that you didn't say anything. You kept it all bottled up inside. And it was just, it was horrendous. So what was happening was calves were obviously short of iodine which um for the cows purposes you meant to have fertility problems we never found that personally personally we never found that the um outward showing signs of our cows were maybe they withheld afterbirths especially i thought it was especially anguses it wasn't the angus part it was the heifer part so after speaking to someone, obviously, and learning about this, it, it, I thought it was Angus's withhold after births when they're iron deficient. No, no, no. Heifers 
and obviously all our Angus's were heifers at the time and I just didn't put two and two together. The calves were lethargic, they didn't move, they were slightly, I would say they were slightly over as well, they were big dopey calves, that's what I can describe it as. Now we tried and tried and tried to keep them alive, I thought it was bad colostrum, I thought the cows were just not good mothers, like I, I tried everything, we thought we had a bug in the shed and we used to send things away to get tested for like E. coli and stuff, no. It was all down to iodine and if we would have spoken about this sooner, we would have learned sooner and been able to write the problem. These are high iodine boluses. That's number one. Number two, these are tablets that go in the water. So they go in this little bag here and you stick however many in per, you know, cows. And you stick that on the ball cock in your water. I, med I mentioned um, a couple of other things. So this is um, Bonagen Scour, it's called. Now this, this is basically to stop, um, it's to add antibodies into the colostrum of the cow that then obviously goes into the calf via the milk and the first milk. Um, it cuts down on scour, basically. Um, hold on, bovine rotavirus strain, coronavirus, E. coli, um, things like that. So basically it gives the calf a little bit of immunity and it's a bit more immunity in its first milk because obviously they're born with zero immune system, aren't they? They're just rubbish. Um, and it literally is a race between the good bacteria and the bad bacteria to get to that stomach and see which one can win. Um, so hopefully this strengthens the colostrum that you're giving the calves and it makes it a better quality so that it protects them as soon as they've had it, which then leads me on to this. All the colostrum we are giving cows um, is um, tested with a refractometer. Now, up until a couple of months ago, I didn't even know what one of these was. I went to, well, I, I did, I did. Um, I went to a calf talk, which I really didn't want to go to. Um, and I learned so much and I'm so glad I went now. And it was done by our vet, Sarah. She's absolutely lovely. And there was lots of things I did know already, but there was also loads of new things that I learned that I didn't think that I was going to. So all colostrum will be tested. We'll see whether it's good quality and then we'll make sure the calf gets extra, you know, oomph. We will also be worming the cows, um, the usual, you know, usual immunizations. And then this one, I've just pulled this out of the fridge at the same time as this to show you. This is Bavella. So this is um, an immunization against um, BVD, bovine viral diarrhea. And we give this one before they're bold, just before they go out to grass. Um, so this is done at a different time, but I thought it's just one of those other things that we give them. I thought I'd show you. Um, it actually, if you if you haven't seen it, if you're a farmer, the likelihood is that you have seen it. But before I moved here, I had never, and I've been keeping cows with voice out of the way for 10 years. I had never seen anything like this. So basically it comes in like, it's a tablet. Hold on. Can you see there? It's like a tablet in there. And then you mix the solution with the tablet and that act obviously activates the thing and bobs your uncle. So yeah, I just thought I'd show you those little few. So I'm going to leave the video there because um, obviously I'm well aware I've just spoken for seven minutes non-stop about things that most people might not find that interesting. But obviously, if you are keeping a cow and it makes a difference to somebody, somebody learns something and recognises something in their own animals and it helps them, then it's worth me talking rubbish for, you know, seven minutes. The thing is, I think, I think we should have spoken about all of this. We should have spoken to our friends. We shouldn't have pretended that everything was perfect because that's what farmers do. I mean, it it's really embarrassing. Like we went the talk that I went to, um, she did she did this thing where she was like, Oh, everybody stand up. And then she was like, sit down if you've um had this happen. And it was like, say, a calf that scoured. Sit down if you've had this happen, sit down if you've had this happen, sit down if you've had this happen. By the end of it, everybody, apart from one person, was sat down, and I'll tell you what, that person was lying. That is farming and um, being honest with people and talking about your problems, I think is half the issue to like mental health issues in farming, which is such a um, a thing close to other people's hearts because I know that a lot of people struggle with it. But I don't just think it's male mental health issues. Yes, predominantly male because there's more men in the industry, but I think it is a farming problem, not just a male problem. Um, I think we should probably be more open 
be less judgmental. Um, a bit like when I got scouring the sheep, uh, scour, when I got scabbing the sheep, a couple of people were like, oh my God, you're not going to tell everyone, are you? And I was like, yes, I'm going to tell the world. I'm going to put it on YouTube. Why not? It was not my fault. I got it. I learned something from it. And if someone else learned something from it, well, there you go. And it's worth doing, isn't it? I just, I think this whole closed book thing is just really bad for people. You shouldn't be like that. It, it, you know, it boils up inside you and it makes things worse. So yeah, if we take anything from this video, it is, um, hi, Iodine Bolas is going to save the world. And I'll see you tomorrow on that bombshell. So old red cows, little red calf was 1230, £1,230. £1, just let that sink in. That was not anything special, startling of an animal. It was just very little. Um, well, you can see it for yourself, to be honest. You can see it for yourself. And if you're a farmer, you know, you know. Do you know what I mean? It's not a, a spectacular animal. It was well fleshed. There was nothing wrong with it. It was just smaller. And the other two went for £1,370. £1, Never, ever in our lives, in Roy's life, have we ever sold stock for that amount of money, ever. And we have bred some nice stuff. Like, we have bred some really nice animals. It's crazy. It's crazy. I think farming in general has suffered, like, especially livestock, beef, you know, has suffered a, a recession itself, its own private recession. You'd like to think that this was the new norm and this is what we should be getting paid, but... I, <laughs> Like, by the time you take into account the rises in everything else around you, um, I suppose that's what we need to be paid to actually, um, you know, be able to feed our children. But that very bitter note aside, oh my God, super thrilled, super thrilled. Like, wow, like, yes. It was a bit of a like, what? <laughs> Wasn't even we both went, oh yeah, that's great. It was like, what? Right, I'm going now, I promise. I'm going, I'm going. I'll see you tomorrow.